Oh, An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. Through genuine expression, discernment, critical thinking, and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you. To be new to the fullest. You know, it's our propensity to police our own thoughts and to jump on bandwagons and think what everybody else is thinking that is so effective at leading us down the garden path and controlling the way we think. And it is very, very important that we always check to make sure that we are thinking our own thoughts. So, yeah, it's really a fine line looking at a lot of this stuff, folks. It's really difficult to present this type of information to people and to present it to them in a positive light. I tell you, it does get a little challenging. And I do very much attempt to keep the shows positive and keep the shows empowering and keep the shows solution-based. But by the same token, one has to be aware of what's going on. But of course, when you start presenting this information to people, you get accused of propagating fear porn, or lowering people's vibration or whatever. And again, this is because people have attachment to the outcome of all this sort of stuff. I mean, I just look at this as an observer and I just see what's coming down and I see what's being rolled out and I call it for what it is. You know, and the sheer concept of information lowering your vibration is really a bizarre concept when you look at it, folks. It's people's choice to have their vibration lowered by attaching negative emotion to the information that they're receiving. It's basically people's inability to process certain forms of light. And I've done entire shows about this because ultimately, folks, all information is light. That's what it is. Light is knowledge. And people simply have difficulty processing certain forms of light. You know, enlightenment is a very destructive process. It really is. It's a breaking down of everything you thought to be true. And the pure irony of New Age mentality that lives in fear of lowering their vibration by looking at negative information, this is basically living your life in a state of fear of processing certain types of information. This is not enlightenment. And this is not living your life in a state of high vibration. It's living your life in a narcissistic bubble and living your life in a state of fear because that's what a lot of the New Age movement is based on. It's a fear of lowering your vibration. When really, if you're connected to source, looking at real information does not lower your vibration. In fact, it inspires you to make change. Now, there was a wonderful quote by somebody, I can't remember who made the quote, but they said, when you look into the mirror of evil, what you see reflected back to you is not the evil in yourself, but it is the beauty in yourself. And the reason that happens, folks, is because when you look into the mirror of evil, it gives you the opportunity to heal that evil, but you have to acknowledge its existence in order to heal it. And that is being a warrior. That is being in a state of high vibration, folks. You can't go through life with blinkers on, refusing to look at information which you believe is not part of your reality because it is part of your reality or your refusal to look at it is perpetuating that reality and it is your fear that is causing you to not look at it, your fear of not being able to control your own mind and not being able to control your own physical self, not being able to control your own vibrational self. It's because you're disconnected from source and so the only source of energy you're able to get is from looking at pretty things and looking at nice things and feel-good things. This is energy harvesting, and it's harvesting energy from things which are not source. 
and it's based in fear. So people really do need to look at what they're doing and realize that it is people's negligence in facing reality and people's refusal to look at that which is happening right around them, their refusal to acknowledge the suffering of other people, which is allowing this suffering to continue. You know, there are so many people out there now who are intent on focusing only on the positive and are intent on raising the vibration of this planet by locking all negative information out of their psyche and by doing so they are in a state of constant fear of ever having their vibration lowered. They don't realize the damage that they're doing and they don't realize that this entire so-called positive stance that they think they're taking has its foundation rooted deeply in fear. And the vibrational signal that they're sending out is exactly the opposite of what they're intending. And it's unfortunate that people are not prepared to look a little deeper at themselves to see where the real foundation of their belief system is coming from. And really the problem is the belief system itself. You know, why would you believe that this is what you need to do? Why not work from experience? And folks, I've put myself in situations where I've stared death in the face and I've seen absolute carnage around me and it's only ever served to inspire me. It's only ever served to fascinate me that I would find myself in that situation and I would be given an opportunity to move through that fear and to move through that situation and to potentially heal that situation. I've always found it fascinating that me, a social misfit guitar player from the southern reaches of Australia could find myself in that sort of a position. So it's really how you look at things, folks. It's how you choose to process this stuff. And it's imperative that people really do look at what the root core of their belief system is and what the foundation of their actions are. Try doing random acts of kindness sometimes during the day. I mean, sometimes I will go to the supermarket and I'll buy the groceries of the person shopping next to me. And look, I'm not buying them a trolley of food, folks. I only go to the small aisle where you've got the basket because I only shop for one person. But you know, very often I'll spend 20 or $30 on buying the person's groceries next to me. And it's someone that I've never met before, someone that I've never seen before, but someone that looks like they're having a, a particularly hard time or a bit of a difficult time with things, looks like money's a little bit tight for them at the time, and they happen to be in the aisle next to me, and my intuition tells me that I should give to this person, and so I do. And this is a person, like I said, that I've never seen before and will likely never see again. And doing that can be incredibly rewarding, folks. I did that to a woman once in the supermarket in Byron Bay. She'd just spent money on the shopping. She'd gone through the checkout before me, and she'd got to the point where she said, oh, you better put one item back because I only have $20 with me. And I told the checkout operator to keep it and just throw it all onto my bill. And I paid for the entire lot. And at the end of it, when we got through the checkout, she offered me the $20 that she was going to spend. And I said, no, no, I can't take your last $20 from you. You should go home and spend that on your daughter. And she burst into tears right there in the supermarket. She told me that she had never felt that kindness from someone and that I had changed her perception of the human race. I'd changed her perspective of humanity and I'd given her a new hope and a new lease on life. And I taught her that not all people were bad, that not everybody was out to get you and there are actually good people in the world who will just help you because they can. And that sort of a thing can really touch someone, folks. Even a smile towards the right person can make a huge difference in somebody's lives. And when you give to people randomly, just because your intuition tells you to do so, it's an incredibly rewarding thing. You don't need for them to give anything back to you. Just seeing the light that you can spark in their eyes is truly one of the most rewarding things that you can do. Just to touch someone else's life like that is a really beautiful thing, folks. And when you do that sort of stuff, you know, it inspires you and it attracts good energy to you, you know. And I'm not saying just go out of your way and give everything away to people and make yourself a target and become a charity for people, but just listen to your intuition and allow yourself to give unconditionally to people who you may not be attracted to or may not have anything you want from them or anything, just random strangers who need a helping hand. You know, you can literally change the world by doing this sort of things, folks, because it inspires people to go out and make a difference on their own. You know, people that you do this for tend to pay it forward. 
and they do it to someone else and they tend to look at things a little bit differently and that creates ripples and that's what we need you know every little bit helps and i think that people just by examining their actions and looking at the real foundation in what they're doing can really make a difference and not only in their lives but to the entire world the way we're going is a direct result of our failure to act and our failure to acknowledge these truths you know and our propensity to follow leaders all the time folks and look at all of the stuff that we're getting in the independent media and be so entertained by it and take everything everybody's saying as the gospel truth or suggesting they're a shill if they don't agree with everything we say you know like when you're listening to people folks everybody even me it's important it's imperative that you realize that what you're listening to is someone's perspective based on the information that they've got and how they've processed that information i mean that's all i'm giving you on any of these shows folks is my perspective on what i see before me how I've analysed it and the way I see it unfolding and what I think the scenarios are, what the logical conclusions are to me. You know, that's all I've ever presented to you and that's all anybody has ever presented to you and ultimately it's up for you to find the truths for yourself. But really the only truth you're really going to find and really going to know is the truth of yourself. And until you're prepared to look there, all the rest is just a distraction. I mean, you're here to experience you ultimately. That's what you came here for. And nobody else is going to help you with that. It's up to you to do that. But you have to remember who and what you are. And you have to be prepared to be proud in that and be prepared to live the experience and to go forward and to not have a stake in the outcome. I mean, it's a temporary existence anyway, folks. It's what you do while you're here that makes a difference. The information that you gather, the lives that you affect, the difference you can make, that's what makes the difference. And people have to realize that and they have to get out of the fear of expressing themselves. It's really imperative that we do that at this time, folks. And we've got to step back and really see things for what they are and see the potential that we have and see the opportunity for real positive change that this time is providing for us if we jump up and seize the moment and take the opportunity and grab it with both hands and do what we can to make a difference in our own corner of the world, or at least become a shining light for others. Do what we can to help others. Those who are shining their light, do what you can to help them. I mean, there's got to be ways that you can get involved, and there are ways that people can get involved, even if it's just supporting those who you know are on the right track and are speaking the truth. And I'm not saying follow them as leaders, but at least help people make a difference. If there are people shining their light, then help that light to shine. You know, we can all make a difference, folks. All we have to do is believe in ourselves and believe in the truth of this species and believe in the truth of our hearts, and we will move forward to a positive place. You know, nobody really knows what that road is going to be, what the path is going to look like, but if we get ourselves in the right vibration again and be prepared to look at the negative and realize that if you're connected to source, it's not going to lower your vibration. It's just going to give you the opportunity to heal that problem then we can make a difference. You know, we've got to shine our light everywhere, folks. That's what enlightenment is. It's bringing light to the darkness, but we have to acknowledge the darkness in order to do that. You know, the dark side, looking at what's really going on and seeing how things could unfold or how they have the potential to unfold, even looking at that, I mean, I find it incredible that I happen to be living in that time when all of this stuff could happen because I can see the change that it's going to make to the human experience, but I can also see the opportunity that it gives for a really good and positive change to come for the human experience if mankind is willing to acknowledge the shadow and acknowledge the darkness. And it's important to acknowledge the difference between fear and concern. I mean, when I look at all of this stuff, folks, I'm not in fear of the future. I'm concerned about the direction that we're going. And there's a difference because when you move into fear, you become paralyzed. But when you become concerned, then you can move into a state of positive action. So all of it provides opportunity, folks. And really, when you look at it all, there's really nothing to be in fear about because this is a temporary existence anyway. And if you don't have a stake in the outcome, then then you begin to see things from a different perspective and you see that it's really about the experience and it's about what you leave behind. And so we've got all of this information now, folks, and so it's an incredible time for mankind. Even though the darkness is right here at our doorstep, it's always darkest before the dawn and we have an opportunity to really make that dawn happen. We have an opportunity to really step into our power now. I mean, like I said, it's going to get a little bit more ugly yet because it's necessary 
to because that's what it's going to take to wake more people up. But still, that does give us the potential for change and all you have to do is maintain your focus and maintain your balance through what is coming.